city down to a grinding halt. It's mind-boggling what you see. From where I'm standing, there's not going to be a power line here tomorrow. These people need power to stay alive. We have the red. Montreal, Canada. Its 3.5 million inhabitants are used to extremely severe winters. They have no choice, as bitterly cold temperatures and heavy snowfalls of as much as 15 inches at a time bury the city. This city knows bad weather. But there is one kind of winter storm that is the toughest to beat, the ice storm. brings the whole city down to a grinding halt. Everything just stops operating. An ice storm is caused when a deluge of rain hits the ground and instantly freezes. A day or two of this is manageable, but any more than that, and Montreal faces a freezing nightmare. So what are the conditions that would create the perfect ice storm? New York just 300 miles to the south. Montreal gets hit by freezing rain an average of 10 days per year. The reasons are location and geography. When warm air from the south meets cold northern air, this creates the ideal conditions above Montreal for extreme winter weather. And because Montreal lies in the midst of the St. Lawrence River Valley, the situation is intensified. As this warm air from the south rides up over the surrounding mountains, it traps the cold polar air in the valley below. The longer these conditions remain, the more severe the weather becomes, setting the stage for a devastating ice storm. So if the perfect ice storm were to strike, it would begin on a January day in the skies above Montreal. It's 5.30 p.m., and freezing rain has begun to fall on the city streets as the dash for home begins. And what everyone wants to know is how long will the storm last? Even a few hours can make the difference between this being an inconvenience or a crisis. to Sophie Bergeron in her home weather studio for another regular update. Not the best way to start the weekend, I'm afraid. In fact, I'd say the safest place to be is indoors, and I'd scrap those travel plans. We've got an ice storm on top of us, folks. Expect slippery driving conditions and possible power outages due to ice buildup. I gotta get back home and do a quick turnaround. I promised the family I'd be up at the cabin an hour ago. Hold on, I gotta call you back. Everyone out on the slick, frozen streets is in danger. <laughs> Energy Quebec to the rescue already. <laughs> yeah, the car is safe. Okay, he's partially conscious. Do you need any help? No, no, I got it from here. Thanks. Yeah, I was just on my way up north for the weekend. Well, you better get out of here. It's supposed to get nasty. Keep your head straight and don't move. 
Within minutes, the ice storm has its first victims. Highways become skating rinks, and back roads, bobsled runs. If it were just a few degrees warmer, this precipitation would be regular rain, a few colder, snow or sleet. To produce rain during an ice storm, the weather needs to be turned on its head. Ice storms are created by atmospheric circumstances that are so unique, they seem impossible. Normally, the Earth's atmosphere is warmer near the surface and gets steadily colder the higher you go. But sometimes warm air can ride over cold, as it does in the St. Lawrence Valley. As the warm air rises, it releases rain, which falls through the cold layer. The perfect amount of cold air then supercools the rain, causing it to be cold enough to freeze the moment it hits the ground. But the conditions have to be exact. Inside the city, the first wave of freezing rain has begun to coat the trees. The result looks more like a picture postcard than a deadly storm. But it's a sign things could get worse. Dad, I didn't think you were coming. Oh, I just took a little extra longer because Mom packed so much stuff. <laughs> oh, sure. Blame it on me. Oh, give me something very heavy. Oh. Oh, so bad. It was raining all day today. Yeah, back in the city, too. In 1998, Montreal suffered the most disastrous, tragic, and expensive ice storm in recorded history. The 98 ice storm was Canada's worst natural disaster, affecting over 5.4 million people or one-fifth of the country's population. During the ice storm in a five-day period, we had 80 hours of freezing rain that produced 100 millimeters of ice. That's a lot of ice all at one time. The storm blanketed an area larger than the state of Florida, 120 miles by 600 miles. 100,000 people took refuge in emergency shelters and 16,000 troops were called up to support emergency services. Over five days, multiple layers of ice built up because of the relentless freezing rain that weighed down everything it touched. Eventually, the city's infrastructure began to collapse. Four million people lost power, and tragically, 28 Canadians lost their lives, some due to hypothermia. If the ice storm of 98 had lasted any longer, no one knows how the city would have continued to cope. It's day two, and the question on everyone's mind now is what will they do if this storm is worse? And more than 40 centimeters of snow has fallen in northern Quebec. Here in Montreal, we continue to experience areas of freezing rain. And for those of you who were around during the 98 storm, there's an uncanny resemblance between then and now. Let's just hope she doesn't stick around for as long. I'm Sophie Bergeron, and you're listening to City Radio 700. Ice storm rain looks like normal rain. But it's quite different than that. Rain starts life high in the atmosphere as snow. As a snowflake falls and reaches warmer air lower in the atmosphere, it melts, becoming a raindrop. When the raindrop reaches the cold layer of air trapped in the valley below, it starts to cool again as it continues to fall, but not to the point of freezing. Instead, the falling water drop enters a rare and unusual state where it becomes cool to below freezing, yet remains a liquid. This is no longer just a droplet of water. It's a smart bomb, primed to freeze anything it touches that's below freezing. Now, if it hits the ground as liquid on a cold mass, uh, a tree branch, a telephone pole, wires, it will freeze instantly into ice. One drop of water turning to ice in an instant 
is the start of a deadly cycle. Billions of supercooled raindrops falling for hours at a time will soon build up layers of ice that will keep growing. Coming up, the storm tightens its icy grip and threatens the most vulnerable. Mrs. Wilson. Next on Perfect Disaster Ice Storm. It's day three of the ice storm, and everything in Montreal is covered. Over an inch of ice has accumulated as the continuous freezing rain smothers the city. For the moment, it's not enough to stop normal life. But the glaze of ice that coats the sidewalks makes walking an almost impossible and sometimes painful pursuit, and driving just as treacherous. A northeasterly wind keeps the temperature at around 25 degrees, ensuring the ice on the roads stays put. Tree branches torn away under the weight of the ice start shorting out the local power lines, creating a new and serious danger. As the storm's icy grip begins to tighten, the elderly, who are very vulnerable, feel it first. Oh my God, Mrs. Wilson! Mrs. Wilson, you should be inside! Oh, Sophie, dear. I'm so cold. It's okay here, let me know. Come on, let's go home. Okay, we're almost at the steps. Are you okay? Yes. Here we go. By the end of the third day, the storm has taken a firm hold on the city. I hope the worst is over. Me too. But for the people of Montreal, the worst is yet to come. The city becomes mummified as it's wrapped tightly in layers of ice. All forms of transportation start to become immobilized, making the only sure way to get around on foot. Stores shut down, trapping the staff inside. Local electric power lines continue to short out the lights, and more importantly, the heat. People are locked in their homes, Few will be prepared for the collapse of everything they take for granted. Well, the first thing, if you want to prepare a population for something like an ice storm, is to tell them what to expect. Hi, Bob, it's me. Look, we have to spell it out. People are already getting hurt. Do you have enough medication at home to take you through the next couple of days? The, the traffic's a mess, and the local power lines are going down all over the place. If the power goes out, do you have some way of staying warm or somewhere to go that you can stay warm even if you can't do things in your own house? We'll take the flag if anything lets up. Thank you. If you know what to expect, you can take the proper precautions to set yourself up so you're not caught. I'm afraid the ice is building everywhere on just about everything. It's tough to forecast something of that magnitude, especially something that goes on that long. The Champlain Bridge is closed and many roads are blocked, so please don't drive unless it's absolutely essential. I'm Sophie Bergeron. I'll be back with an update eight minutes past the hour. Stay tuned. While the ice continues to strangle the city's infrastructure, those who know how to get by without the conveniences of modern life will stand a better chance of getting through this disaster. But the ice looks a little thick, no? Yeah, well, if the branches get any lower, we're going to have to knock the ice off. But for those who must rely on technology, life is about to get a lot worse. By nightfall of day three, over half of Montreal's annual total for freezing rain has fallen. The temperature is dropping as frigid night air funnels down from the Arctic. Most people are now hunkered down, hoping that the electricity they need to heat their homes holds out. Outside, no corner of urban Montreal is untouched by the suffocating cloak of ice. Domestic power feeds continue to crash faster than repair crews can fix them. 
Street by street, parts of the city are now plunged into darkness. But this ice storm is far from over. Four days later, the ice storm shows no signs of moving on anytime soon. It is intensifying. With more power outages, people are desperate to keep warm. There's a run on the stores. Any type of heating fuel is up for grabs. Coal, gas, even disposable barbecues. Tragically, these makeshift heating methods will potentially bring on a different set of problems as the storm persists. Firewood becomes the new currency, the most valuable commodity of all. Supplies dwindle in the local stores as residents stock up. Although bouts of freezing rain pass over Montreal more than 18 times each winter season, the city lives in fear of the ice storm that never leaves. And this one is proving to be just that. Another feared ingredient needed to create the ultimate ice storm disaster now kicks in. Hi, Bob. I just got an email from Environment Canada. That ridge of high pressure over the Atlantic isn't going anywhere, which means neither is the system above us. It's stalled with more ice storms to come. It's the worst possible news. The storm has been locked in place above the city by a huge area of high pressure in the Atlantic Ocean. This system has brought all of the North American weather systems to a standstill. The normal pattern of west to east weather flow is blocked. The cold air continues to flow under the warm air coming up from the Gulf of Mexico. As the days progress, a series of small cyclones will emerge from the warm southern system. These are mini weather systems within the big one. Each of these has enough moisture locked within it to create its own ice storm that will be constantly refueled by the flow of warm, moist air from the south. Montreal is about to be entombed in ice. As long as the atmosphere stays stable and, and nothing moves, it could go on for a very long time. Normally, the atmosphere is in a state of constant flux, but occasionally weather systems get stuck. This has happened before in different parts of the world, and each time it has brought an untold disaster. In 1998, a powerful Category 5 hurricane stalled over Central America. Day after day, winds of up to 180 miles per hour battered much of Honduras and Nicaragua. The torrential rain from Hurricane Mitch caused mudslides and floods that killed a reported 18,000 people. England, 2005. A stalled thunderstorm dumped eight inches of rain in five hours over the village of Boscastle. The river burst and a 10-foot wall of water traveling at 40 miles per hour swept through the village. Most stalled weather systems are caused by areas of high pressure known as blocking highs. If you have a blocking high and you, you, keep have, you, you still have warm air coming in, coming in and you still have clouds with snow falling, if you have that situation, particular situation, as long as it stay there, you have freezing rain. Welcome back to City Radio 700. I'm afraid this ice storm isn't showing any signs of going anywhere. The bad news is we can expect up to 25 millimeters of freezing rain over the next 24 hours. And if anyone out there is counting, this ice storm is about to go into the record books as the longest one ever. Steel transmission towers are no match for heavy ice and severe wind. Perfect disaster ice storm returns after this. By the end of day four, Montreal is weary. The sheer weight of the ice from this storm is crushing the remaining cables and utility poles, causing them to collapse. A million people are now without power. By the fifth day, the city looks like a war zone. Hospitals and community buildings quickly fill up. 
Broken bones and fractures are now increasingly common as people struggle to get around. The homeless, the elderly, and many without heat or food come to the shelters for sanctuary. As the situation continues to deteriorate, these places become the city's lifeline. Here, you want to help me get these up there? Thanks. But even their emergency power sources can't last forever. By now, there is no internet communication or cell phone reception. Only media outlets with emergency power generators can get information out. And only those with portable radios will hear them. Please stay in your homes until further instruction or until you are visited by the emergency services. Only call 911 if your life is in immediate danger. With no power, it takes less than 72 hours for the temperature of an unheated house to drop dangerously low. And this is when people are more susceptible to unseen dangers. For the human body to work best, we want our temperature to be around 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, around 37.5 degrees centigrade. That's when we work the best. As soon as you cool the body down, things don't function as they should. Mrs. Wilson? The brain stops functioning well. You became less able to use your muscles. You become slower in terms of your thinking process, and it just gets worse. You'll start, obviously, shivering as you try and generate more heat to kind of make up for the heat that you aren't getting. This is Wilson. If your body gets really, really, really cold, well, it gives up. Oh, my God. This is Wilson. And you may find them totally out of it, totally confused, even comatose. Mrs. Wilson. Oh my God, you're so cold. Okay, I'm gonna go get help. The body works strangely as it cools, at first restricting all blood to its extremities, hands, feet, then legs and arms. The warm blood is kept in the core of the body for vital organs like the heart, lungs, and kidneys. This is what saves many people from hypothermia. But when the body cools further, the brain can become seriously dysfunctional, and the body sends out a message to the blood vessels to open up, encouraging a flow to the extremities. This is the most dangerous stage. You start to feel warm again, but it's a cruel deception because a feeling of overwhelming tiredness hits, causing you to fall into what could become a deadly sleep. With a large percentage of the population holed up inside their homes, they are now also exposed to another very different kind of killer. In the ice storm of 1998, more people were killed by carbon monoxide poisoning than by hypothermia. Where'd you find him? His living room. He'd been heating it with a portable barbecue. Nice and warm. Okay, he's probably gassed himself by accident. Carbon monoxide poisoning, how are you doing? You probably got a lungful when you were taking him out of the house. I'm all right, just a little headache. That's the first sign. Have a seat over there. Poisoning with carbon monoxide tends to affect the brain and the heart first. So people become confused, dizzy, nauseated. They don't feel right. And it can go all the way to inducing coma. Someone passing out, falling to the ground, maybe even seizing. The biggest killer in an ice storm is fire. Fire takes more lives and destroys more property than anything else. Blazes break out across the city as people burn anything to keep warm, many times without thinking of the ramifications. Attempts to put out the flames by firemen are often futile as the water freezes on contact. Next on Perfect Disaster Ice Storm, Montreal braces for the worst as the city's lifeline crumbles. By the end of day five, the storm has now laid down a solid pack of ice of over four inches deep, thicker than a sidewalk slab, and just as strong. 
The ice formed by freezing rain is the toughest ice on Earth. The main reason for that is there, there's very little, very few air bubbles in the ice, in the water droplet. Normal ice is full of air bubbles and other impurities because it freezes slowly. It has a frosty appearance and is weak and easy to crack. But the ice formed by the supercooled rain of an ice storm is different because it's fallen through cold, clear air and turns to ice so quickly, there's no time for bubbles to form. Ice formed during an ice storm is also the heaviest. Just a six inch square weighs more than a house brick and there are millions of bricks piling up on every surface around. Once the ice layers reach over four inches deep, their sheer weight threatens every major structure. And there is nothing more important to a city in crisis than the giant steel transmission towers that bring its power. Montreal sits on an island connected to the outside world by bridges and tunnels. It receives its power by highly vulnerable power lines. The city relies almost exclusively on hydroelectric power, generated far to the north in James Bay and Labrador. This creates a logistics problem because most of the hydropower is in the north and most of the people are in the south. It takes over $15 billion worth of transmission lines, almost enough to reach once around the world to feed electricity to the power-hungry south. Ultimately, eight main high-voltage transmission lines bring over 20 gigawatts of power to the city. Right now, any power to Montreal will rely on these delicate arteries that are covered in ice. Dawn on the sixth day. At the power company's headquarters, reports are coming in that will change everything. Overnight, there's been more freezing rain, and the recipe for the most devastating ice storm imaginable adds the final ingredient. Many of the huge cable-carrying towers have crashed under the weight of the ice, and three of the eight transmission lines are down. How to fix them has yet to be determined. I don't have a good feeling about this storm, Jill. Stay inside. There is only one way to find out. Someone will physically have to go and take a look. All it takes is just one break anywhere along a power line's length to render it useless. With hundreds of miles of cable to check, it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. The best way to do this is by chopper, but in these conditions, it's a big risk. Helicopters can't fly in freezing rain. Their only hope is that a new downpour doesn't start while they are in the air. We've got an airborne visual on the area. It's our worst nightmare. The towers carrying Montreal's power lines have fallen like dominoes. It's a catastrophe. This phenomenon is called a cascade failure. One line snaps under the weight of the ice, and the sudden release of tension topples the whole row. With many miles of power lines down, the job of reconnecting them is not going to be easy, or more importantly, quick. It's a total write-off. I mean, we're not talking a repair job, it's a total rebuild. With only half the line surveyed, the freezing rain returns. Check that control. It started raining again. We're freezing up. We're going to have to go in for an emergency landing. Repeat. Emergency landing. Over. Good job. In the first days of the storm, Montreal's two airports battled to stay open. But when the freezing rain refused to let up, the glaze ice overwhelmed the de-icing crews. Commercial aircraft normally fly above freezing rain and are designed not to be affected by it. But if the runways cannot be cleared, 
they can't land. Once they come in for landing, if the freezing rain has been occurring for a long period of time at an airport, uh, they're landing on a sheet of ice. How are you going to stop a 747 on a, on a skating rink? The news tightens around the stricken city. Emergency supplies are drying up. The city is in crisis. Nurse! Perfect disaster returns. Freezing rain has spread over an area of 70,000 square miles, taking out towers across the entire region. One by one, six of the eight power lines that feed Montreal have collapsed. The last line into the north of the city is groaning under the extreme weight of ice, and one ice-laden line hangs on to the east. Each cable is now carrying weight over 10 times its design load, the equivalent to a person hanging on every 10 feet. Montreal's only remaining lifelines are at the breaking point. Once those lines go down, uh, they're, so, they're such their main trunks that brings, that brings life to the city. And once you lose that line, and, and it's, uh, it brings the whole city down to a grinding halt, everything just stops operating. The power goes out. Uh, a major urban center is in darkness. It's a very eerie feeling to be traveling through the city with no one in it. The city is under siege. But now the supply of electricity is so limited that power companies, in an act of triage, have to cut off the last remaining domestic users, conserving what they do have for essential services. Hospitals are the top priority, but for first responders, conditions on the city streets make reaching the critically ill a slow and dangerous process. Is she gonna make it? Her pulse is weak and slow. She's severely hypothermic. If she can hang on into the shelter, she's got a chance. I'm coming with you. I'm the only one she's got. Thank you. It's now the seventh night of freezing rain, and a state of emergency has been declared. With this severe of an ice storm, the coating of ice that disabled much of the man-made infrastructure also takes a huge toll on nature. A single 50-foot conifer will accumulate as much as 45 tons of ice during a prolonged period of freezing rain. Many trees won't survive this extra weight. Oh, this is crazy. He knows where we are, and we're safe. But where is he? It was only meant to be a one-hour inspection flight. While the freezing rain continues, the power companies are helpless. the hospitals and shelters show signs of life. Police and medics bring in the lucky few they were able to rescue. The rest have to make their own way to the hospitals and shelters. to have has such a good neighbor. No. I should have known this might happen the minute the power went out. It's... She's here now. We're warming her up slowly with a heated IV. Emily's your dad. Where on earth are you? Still in the field. We got a little stranded. 
They found us. We'll be okay. So the power is working? The phone system is back up? No, babe. Power's down everywhere. Hello? Michelle? Jill? Oh, we've lost him. The telecom network has now failed, even at the emergency level, and the first responders are losing their battle. 30 people have been killed in house fires and nine from falling ice. Thousands in the city's shelters are suffering burns, breaks, and disorientation. And overcrowding is quickly spreading diseases like influenza and gastric flu. Look, we only have three IV sets. Well, that's not enough. Well, it's going to have to do the all we have. Medical and emergency supplies have dried up because all the bridges and roads into the city are closed. Trucks can't get in. Evacuation of the critically ill and injured off the island is not an option because no one can get out. The freezing rain finally stops, but an even more dangerous weather pattern is about to hit. Coming up on Perfect Disaster, Ice Storm. Montreal is in the midst of a massive ice storm, and its residents are becoming desperate. 20,000 troops have now been mobilized to deal with this disaster. They are the only people with transportation and technology tough enough to work in these conditions. They work around the clock delivering fuel for emergency generators and clearing the debris from roads. But they struggle to fix and maintain the failing utilities and have little impact on the wholesale collapse of the infrastructure. Their presence on the streets, on the other hand, has a reassuring effect for a population with little hope and presently no escape from the persisting ice storm. Then, on day seven, in the late afternoon, the weather that has gripped Montreal for nearly a week begins to change. The temperature starts to rapidly fall, and the freezing rain begins to turn into snow. The snow signals the end of the ice storm. It's too cold to rain. The ice storm's over. Oh, thank God. It's over. <laughs> but the end of the freezing rain is not the good news it should be. The giant weather system that has been blocking the ice storm, stalling it over the city, is finally moving away across the Atlantic. But as the ice storm follows it, the void it leaves is quickly filled with a new weather system, a huge winter storm moving in from the west. With it comes a new danger, strong winds. This did not happen in the storm of 1998, but it's what will make this ice storm nothing short of the perfect disaster. I think I might have spoken too soon. Okay, listen. Everybody get back inside now, okay? Everybody. The snow is heavy and sticky and the wind is increasing. Now the giant towers that have held out against the ice face their final test. Get me control, put them on speaker. The news from up north is they've got one line left standing. How are Alpha and Beta looking down with you? Well, Alpha just cascaded into the sunset. We have to save Beta before it goes the same way. We've only got two options left for de-icing, and both are so risky, we're going to have to wait for board approval tomorrow. From where I'm standing, there's not going to be a power line here tomorrow.
can now prevent the final row of towers into the city from collapsing. In a last desperate bid to save the only power line left, the energy companies literally take matters into their own hands. Now that it's clear enough for choppers to fly, they take up some men willing to try a dangerous method to dislodge the ice from the cables. Smashing it off by hand. But hovering beside a 200-foot ice-coated tower could not be more risky. Already on the verge of collapse, one false move could cause a devastating cascade of towers. This daring operation will take many hours. There are only a few remaining miles of ice cable to clear. If they can do it, before the wind blows them down, they will have saved Montreal's last lifeline. As the sun rises, Montreal breathes a collective sigh of relief. The remaining power lines were saved, and much-needed power slowly returns to the city. The first to get it back are those who need it the most. How's she doing? Shh. <laughs> Sounds like there's a lot of miles left in that heart. Jill! Dad! Oh, my goodness. Surviving an ice storm is about ingenuity and endurance, but most importantly, about community. Uh, it's really an amazing uh, camaraderie that forms. Uh, you really get to know the people in your city. People come together in an amazing way. People open their doors to their neighbors. After an ice storm of this magnitude, it will take the city months to rebuild, nature years to recover, and people generations to forget what you have just seen may not happen tomorrow but it will happen because in the future milder winters may mean the conditions to create the perfect ice storm could be just around the corner